Welcome to the Essential Geopolitics Podcast from Stratfor, part of the RAIN Network. I'm Emily Donahue. In this podcast, I'm speaking with Michael Mondever, Stratfor Senior Analyst for Global Economics. Michael, welcome. Thank you, Emily. It's a pleasure to be here. Michael, China has been in the news a lot recently, not only for its current diplomatic spat with the United States, but it's also been arguing with India. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about the second largest economy in the world. How's it doing? Well, Emily, um, putting aside the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic initially broke out in China, um, like, like the rest of the world, China has seen a severe negative impact on its economy. Much of that was due to the severe nature of the lockdown in China, something that's possible in an, in an authoritarian country, which can essentially mandate compliance, unlike, say, in the U.S. Um, so in economic terms, the Chinese gross domestic product, which is the broadest measure of economic activity and growth, was down nearly 7% in the first three months of this year. That's quite a steep decline. More recently, in the second quarter, that would be April, May, June, growth seems to have resumed somewhat, um, but it's a very slow rate of growth compared to earlier Chinese historical trends. China reported that its uh, gross domestic product was up by 3.2% at an annual rate, but uh, as I noted, that's much less than historical trends. And and in addition to that, there's some anomalies in the data which suggests that the economic recovery is actually going very slowly and is somewhat uneven. Uh, In particular, much of the increase was on the supply side of the economy, with both domestic and international demand for Chinese production continuing to show declines from what it was a year ago. And as a result, output in the first half was something like 1.5% less in the same period in 2019. What indicators of economic activity are you actually looking at? Well, as you know, economic data is backward-looking. It's reported with a lag. Uh, We don't have real-time data on what's going on, but uh, we we had a a data dump, so to speak, from the Chinese government recently um, in which it reported industrial output, retail sales, unemployment, and domestic investment. Um, in particular, industrial output and manufacturing was up in June over what it was in May, and much of the production that took place probably went directly into inventories rather than being sold. Inventories counts as unanticipated investment in the national income and product accounts, so it adds to growth. On the other side of the equation, demand continued to be down in China. Retail sales were down in June nearly 2%. That's, again, compared to a year earlier. The decline was less than it was in May, but it still indicates households are not consuming as much as they were previously. And supporting that is that uh, while unemployment, urban unemployment, I should say, is down slightly, that indicator undercounts the number of jobless in the Chinese economy since it excludes migrants. Um, There are millions of migrants who are reported to be residents of their home provinces, their home areas, but who actually work in cities and they aren't counted. When they are out of work, it's not counted in the urban unemployment numbers. So overall, we think consumers are going to continue to be very cautious. The other indicators we're looking at are fixed investment, which was up in June, but most of that was due to government investment in infrastructure or was by state-owned companies. Private investment, on the other hand, was down significantly. And finally, while exports and imports were up, um, which together netted show external demand for Chinese products, and they were slightly positive, that was mainly based on low prices for commodities and raw materials, and Chinese foreign trade is down overall in the first half. So, Michael, what is the government doing in response to this? First of all, Emily, the central government is providing a massive amount of fiscal support to the economy. The Chinese reported budget deficit, that is the central government's budget deficit, is 3.5% of GDP, But there's a lot of off-budget borrowing, things that are not transparent in Chinese economic accounting. And that puts the real deficit is estimated at closer to about 11% of GDP, and perhaps even higher given the lack of transparency in the Chinese accounts. 
And in addition to that, the People's Bank of China, the central bank, is providing liquidity, much like the Fed is doing in the U.S., and that can be used to finance borrowing and to finance transactions in the economy. So what's the outlook and what does it imply for the global economy? Because China was first in to the pandemic effect, so to speak, it's, it's also been the first out. And we've been looking at it as sort of a prototype for recovery in much of the rest of the world. Despite some isolated outbreaks of the virus in, in both uh, in Beijing and also in Hong Kong, the virus has been largely contained. But as I said before, recovery has been very slow and uneven across the economy. And that slowness, that inability to return to a, a pre-pandemic normalcy is really not encouraging for the rest of the world. And we're seeing that mainly in the United States right now. As far as China itself, much of the recovery has so far been policy directed and government driven. And that endangers what, what is supposed to be a Chinese rebalancing away from their earlier growth model, which was basically led by infrastructure investment and reliance on low-wage manufacturing exports. And without that, China's economy is slowing down. And for the foreseeable future, that rebalancing is going to be on hold. So China will probably see sluggish growth for some time. And given, as you said, that it's the second largest economy, that means sluggish growth for much of the world economy. The risks we see are that there could be a renewed outbreak of the virus. We continue, as I said earlier, to see households and businesses cautious in their expenditures. There's also a shaky demand for China's exports internationally, and that could be exacerbated by tensions with the U.S. And one thing that's not generally known is that there's a tremendous amount of flooding in southern and central China due to heavy monsoon rains. O overall, it's really hard to be very cheerful, but then again, economics is called the dismal science. Michael, thank you so much. You're welcome, Emily. Michael Mondever is Stratfor's Senior Analyst for Global Economics. He monitors issues related to country and political risk, including fiscal and monetary policies for Stratfor Worldview. You can read his geopolitical forecasts and analysis at Stratfor Worldview. Podcast listeners get a special subscription rate. Go to stratfor.com slash podcast offer. That's all one word, stratfor.com slash podcast offer. I'm Emily Donahue. Thanks for listening.